Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma mubarak to you all. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, in Ahmed, who and a starina, who and a stofer who. When I would be la him in Sharuri and Fusana, me and say Yati Amalina, may yadi hilla who fella modilla la who may you lil fella hadiella. Why shadu a la ilaha illa law, wahta who la sharika la who. Why shadu enna Mohammedan Abdu who or a Sulu, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner, and I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is Allah's servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon Ya ayyuhal nasu taku rabbakum alladhi khalqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a wa attaqullah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah wa kulu kawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد O ye who believe O ye who believe be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah O humanity be mindful of your creator who created you from a single soul and from that soul created its mate and through both Allah spread countless men and women and be mindful of Allah in whose name you appeal to one another and honor your ties of kinship Surely Allah is ever watchful over you. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah and say what is right. Allah will bless for you your deeds, for uh, bless for you your deeds, and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah, and whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, has truly achieved a great triumph. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana inna ka anta la alimun hakim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasuli amri wa halul uktata milisani yafkahu kauli. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Again, assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, as we come to this Juma, we are at the one week mark of concluding Ramadan and celebrating Eid and all that has come with it. So it's hard to believe that, you know, it's already been a week for so many of us and now it's 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 come to the point where we are moving on from Ramadan and looking ahead and so inshallah today I want to just uh, give some simple uh, navigational uh, guides in a sense how how can we leave Ramadan in a sense behind while still looking ahead at what is to come that what what can we take away from this Ramadan so that it was not a one and done experience knowing that inshallah uh, if Allah gives us the blessing, we will be able to see another Ramadan and beyond that. So how can we prepare? How can we continue to learn and live a substantive life and live what we had uh, basically practiced in what was our reality in Ramadan? And so, uh, as I mentioned, it may feel just like yesterday, we were welcoming the blessed month and getting excited for everything, you know, whether we're able to fast or just in general experience community, or if we were just on top of our game in other regards. So, so there's so many different things that, that uh, may have come up in Ramadan. And now we may be at that stage where uh, some of it may feel like it's waning. We might be waking up a little bit later. We may be struggling with the times that we're praying. We might be struggling with other various things. And so it may feel like that all that we were doing in Ramadan seems to be coming like it's being undone or it's unwinding in some way, shape or form. And so what we want to do inshallah in this khutbah, which I've titled Beyond Ramadan, is to not forget the lessons that we have learned in Ramadan, but to be able to take exactly what we had learned and looking beyond just the month so that we're not just caught up in nostalgia and saying that, oh, we were doing this, we were doing all this stuff and looking backwards and saying that, what well, you know, we're, we're, we're not as good as we used to be over here when we look back, instead being able to provide us an outlet that says, hey, this is what we were capable of. This is what we are able to do. Let's see how much more we can do, if not consistently, but even more so to, to do it going forward. So inshallah, let's, let's first off and start just thinking about what the purpose of Ramadan was. What's the purpose of our fasting? We started our khutbah today, inshallah, by opening up with three recitations of uh, the, uh, verses of the Quran, and each one of them lifted up the aspects of being mindful 
of Allah, ittaqullah, that, that to be mindful of Allah, that Ya ayu alladheena aamanu ittaqullah haqqa tuqaati, ya ayu hannas uttaqur rabbakum alladhi khalakakum min nafsin wahida, ya ayu alladheena aamanu ittaqullah wa kulu qawlan sadeeda, that O oh, humanity, be mindful of your creator. Be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Time and time again. And in the Quran, it teaches us right before Ramadan is mentioned in the Quran. The one time it's mentioned in the Quran, uh, fasting is, is told that it is prescribed for us as it was prescribed for those who came before us so that we may change, uh, we may we may attain God consciousness, that we may be people who are conscious of God, mindful of Allah, that we are uh, fearing in a sense of being in awe and being aware of Allah. So this, this comes in part and parcel with the fasting that we were doing. The fasting that we were doing was not just caloric loss or abstaining for food or simply to uh, maximize our rituals and just to empathize with those who don't have any and just call it a day. The fasting was supposed to be one that removes us of the physical nourishment that we need to make us aware of the spiritual nourishment that we need and that actually gets us through the day. And so Ramadan's purpose in and of itself was not just to lose the pounds or lose the calories or to just maximize the number of rituals or prayers that we do or our spiritual sh uh, stat sheet. We talked about how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi lifted up that there's people who go through Ramadan praying uh, beyond any measure, fasting without any uh, kind of defect, and all they'll get out in that fasting and in that praying of theirs is uh, hunger thirst and uh, lack of sleep or sleep deprivation, seeing that it's not just about those deeds, it's also about the intentionality that goes behind them and what we are trying to achieve with them. So Ramadan's purpose in and of itself is essentially to help us not just do the most that we can. Ramadan is to help us transform, is to help us change, is to help us break our old patterns, not just short-term behavior modification. And uh, it's, it's essentially something that is like a dawn. It's a dawn that leads to the creation of a new day. And in all senses of the world, whether, uh, whether spiritually, whether physically, whether mentally, emotionally, socially, we are to look at ourselves back at Ramadan 1 and now looking, our, looking at ourselves in Shawwal or looking at ourselves after Ramadan concluded and be able to see is there any kind of tangible difference that was made maybe you know i'm not 100 transformed in what i used to be like and now what i'm now but maybe there's something that i left maybe there's something different about me back then and now and how are we going to know that unless we evaluate ourselves and and, and be able to ask ourselves and interrogate ourselves those questions rather than being caught up in in just the statistics aspect of it so we want to be able to sit with ourselves to learn from not just who we are, learn about who we are, learn who we were and where we are now. Uh, and as such, in, 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 in the mystical tradition of Islam, once we come to know who we are, where we are, we come and draw closer to Allah. Uh, when we were going through Ramadan, uh, we weren't just learning to, you know, like we said, become uh, perfect in our uh, in all of our rituals and our deeds, we, we learn self-restraint. We, we learn how to hold back uh, our appetites, that which we physically need or we physically say that we need, and we, we replaced it with that which spiritually gets us through, which, which uh, substantively helps us get through when we aren't nourished on a, in a physical sense. So, you know, we don't go... We don't just go through Ramadan uh, shedding all that we came in with and become completely different people. Uh, instead, we, we build off of what we learned. We come into Ramadan with certain predispositions. We build off of those predispositions. We unwork some of those predispositions and, and we, we change based off of what is there. We don't just come in, blaze everything to the ground and say, we're going to start completely new. No, we have certain things that we need to reconcile with certain uh, hurts and harms that we've done to other people or to ourselves that we need to be able to sit with and reconcile with. With. certain bad habits that we have that we're not just going to completely erase but learn how to not just uh, correct that bad habit but be able to use it as a teaching moment and so we we don't just become totally different people we build off of what we learn we see what we did well we improve and we find a way to do better uh, and at the end of the day we do it for no other reason but for the sake of trying to attain closeness to Allah and so while in Ramadan though we might not realize it we actually do more of what we were created to do. What we were created to do was to worship Allah. As, as, as the Quran says that, you know, we have not created humanity and the unseen and the jinn and all this, but that they may worship, but that they may worship Allah. And so 
this worshiping is not just that which is done on the prayer mat. This is the worshiping that happens when we serve uh, the poor and the needy, when we break bread with people in community, when we keep ties of kinship, when we check up on one another, when we uh, are restraining our egos, when we are abstain abstaining from gluttony, when we are holding our, our, uh, our egos in check, when we are holding our anger in check, when we are reflecting on Allah's qualities, uh, when we are in community, but not just for the sake of celebration, but for the genuine sake of being there as a uh, reminder of Allah's blessings. And so when we're at this juncture now, as we come past Ramadan, just under a week past Ramadan, we look back and we want to evaluate ourselves. Have we become more God conscious? If not, the journey doesn't end with Ramadan. It keeps going. How do we make it count? So what I want to lift up for us today, inshallah, are some uh, some some questions for us to ask as we are you know as we navigate past Ramadan, but being mindful that inshallah, if Allah wills and and inshallah Allah does will, we are able to see another Ramadan and being able to reap the benefits of that. But some questions that we can ask ourselves, and this was uh, sourced and provided uh, earlier this week uh, as as we concluded Ramadan uh, through our. Muslim space, uh, Instagram, social media campaign. We do uh, mental health Mondays. We do spiritual care Sundays sometimes. And this was one of those posts. And I just feel it's helpful just for us to rehash this and to be able to sit with it for, for a little bit to think about where are we going to go from here? So as, as I mentioned, you know, with Ramadan ending, we might feel that where we were in a groove and we were doing real good. We were waking up every day or we were like just hitting all the different marks and metrics and we felt really satisfied. Other people may not have felt that way. We may have felt that, you know, it, it, we're, we're just kind of trudging along, but regardless, uh, however it may have felt um, at the end, we, we need to be able to sit back and reflect whether it went well, whether it didn't went well, um, and what, what can that tell us for our days going forward? Because as I mentioned, our Ramadan, our spiritual journey doesn't start and end with Ramadan. Uh, our spiritual journey may be amplified by Ramadan. It may take a hit during Ramadan for some folks, but it continues in the month after. So what can we do in being able to do some of that patchwork, in being able to do some of that reflection and introspection to make these days just as as if not more substantive, inshallah, than we had in Ramadan. So first and foremost, we want to ask ourselves, when we have lifted up the verse of the Quran that says that you were prescribed fasting, that you may become God conscious, that you may become aware of Allah, that you may become mindful of Allah. Do we feel more mindful? Our first question here, do we feel more mindful? What is asking ourselves, what is our relationship with Allah after Ramadan? What was our relationship with Allah from the time we started Ramadan up until now? And be able to chart that, thinking, how, how was it? How do, I, how do I evaluate that? Just just sitting with yourself and asking, did I have a good relationship with Allah? Um, remembering that fasting was prescribed for the sake of giving more mindfulness and consciousness of God. And Ramadan being a month that was marked by fasting uh, and a time of revelation or a time of connection, uh, of divine connection, uh, it asks us, how are we it begs the question, how are we and God doing? And, and it's okay if, if there's that part in the question where it feels awkward. It's like, I, I don't know if we're in a good place. I don't know if we're in a good place. I, I, I think I'm in a working relationship right now. I don't know if it's as, you know, uh, if, it, if it's as, you know, just uh, silver lined as, as people may assume it to be or as, as just perfect as people may think. It may be in a tough spot, but we won't know and we won't be able to be conscious of God, conscious of God. We won't be able to be mindful of Allah. We won't be able to mind, be mindful of our relationship with Allah unless we have that honest evaluation. So asking yourself, do I feel more mindful of Allah in the everyday actions I do, not just when I'm eating, but when I'm going uh, outside, when I go to work, when I am meeting with uh, fellow friends and everything, when I am uh, sitting with my family and eating, when I'm you know, just starting the car and driving, when I'm doing anything, grocery shopping, am I mindful of Allah? Does Allah occupy any of these mundane parts of my life? Or have I continued kind of without thinking about Allah? So I want to evaluate that and think about what, what can we do to just push ourselves a little bit better that maybe it may be that no, we're not thinking about Allah in any sense of the word. We're not thinking about Allah any any tangible way. And it may just be that uh, it just it's just that we need to say our bismillah. We just need to say, you know, alhamdulillah. We need to just incorporate Allah into the, the minutia of our lives. And so asking ourselves that question. Number two, what is something that we did or that we started in Ramadan that we can keep? For many of us, 
in Ramadan, it may be that we started fasting. You know, it may be that we started to pray in congregation. It may be that we started to pray on time or we, we started to do all these different things. And, you know, whether we realize it or not, uh, we, we may be doing, we may have done quite a few things that uh, we did in Ramadan that we usually don't do. And so they don't need to only be things that we do in Ramadan, whether it's fasting regularly or praying regularly or giving charity regularly or seeing our family or even just being mindful, uh, no matter how small or insignificant that we think, the, the, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that the best deeds are those which are done consistently and done moderately. But what are some small things that we may have done in Ramadan that we can keep? Just some small little things that we knew we were going to be a little bit more mindful of ourselves while we're fasting. Uh, why, why does it have to stop with that? Why, why does it have to be only when fasting we need to hold our tongue back? We need to restrain our anger. We need to abstain from that uh, which may be harmful from us. Or, or, or you know, we, we, we started to check in with our relatives. We started to call our parents. We started to do all these different things. Why does it have to just stop with Ramadan? Asking yourself, what can I keep doing? Because in, in actuality, it's absolutely applicable at all other times of the year. The third thing, what is something that we stopped? What is something that we stopped doing in Ramadan that we can completely start to leave off or taper off from? You know, during Ramadan, we had the opportunity to restrain ourselves from things that we normally take in during the day, which might not be beneficial for our physical, mental, or spiritual health. And we saw how we were able to get by without these negative things that a lot of times people would ask us like, hey, how are you able to even get through the stress without you know, taking a drink of this or doing this or doing that uh, and, and, and being able to take a pause and see like, yeah, you, you are capable of that. You know, nothing, nothing new was injected. You were able to do that from your own volition, but Ramadan set the tone. How can we keep that going? You know, one bad habit dropped during Ramadan and left uh, back in the dust is the marker of a successful Ramadan. Maybe you came into Ramadan and you were backbiting a lot. And now you, that's something that you just, you just don't do. You know, you, 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 you broke that habit and maybe you're, you're struggling with your prayer. Maybe you're struggling with your fasting, but the fact that you dropped that backbiting, that's a marker of a successful Ramadan. Inshallah, it opens the door for you to improve the relationship on the other things. Maybe you weren't praying at all. Maybe you just started praying. Maybe you weren't fasting. Maybe you were able to finally fast or, you know, you started fasting. Maybe you're doing something. That's just one little good thing. You're giving charity and you just started to do that. Or, hey, you started to build a connection with your family. You started to maintain those ties of kinship. It may not be regularly, but you're able at least to start it. And if you're able to keep it up we, we, and, 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 you know, continue it, there's the benefit in that. But if you're able to stop doing something, if you're able to stop doing something, it has the same, uh, the same reward in a sense. It has the same benefit that if you're stopping yourself from, if it's, if it's taking that drink of alcohol once a night, if it's, you know, just stopping yourself from uh, whether it's smoking or just some, doing something that's detrimental to your own self and just leaving it seeing that as a mercy from a law and seeing that as a way of having a successful Ramadan that doesn't have to just be limited to Ramadan. Number four, thinking to yourself, did you accomplish the goals that you set for yourself and how can you continue to work towards them? Uh, many of us may have had certain goals or certain things that we would like to have, uh, have completed in Ramadan. And in inevitably, many of us maybe have had many of those goals not come to being fulfilled. We may have wanted to finish the whole Quran. We may have wanted to do all these different things or worship certain things or memorize certain du'as or, you know, check up with people, have certain, you know, uh, iftars or whatever it may be. And we may not have uh, done that because we might have set a high bar for ourselves and we might not have been able to do as much as we had hoped for, uh, whether in our prayers or our good deeds or fasting or anything else. But just because Ramadan ends doesn't mean that these goals and our commitment to them should as well. The work doesn't end with Ramadan. Inshallah, like the Ramadan helps. It's, it's like the fast lane in Mario Kart. It helps speed us up and, 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 and helps boost us to where we can get into a position to really uh, finish well with respect to our, our spiritual race. But it's not the entire race itself. It's not even the whole track. It's just a portion of it. But it teaches us to show that we can do, uh, our, we can be our best when we are uh, taking that space, giving ourselves that break from what society tells us that we need to consume. So thinking about yourself that uh, if you did have any goals, how are your goals? Uh, how are they met? How are they maybe not met? And how can you take the rest of the year to be able to work on them? And if you didn't set goals, maybe in hindsight, thinking that, hey, this is what I had in Ramadan. Here's what I did good. Here's what I did that needs some working on. How can I set some goals? Just having measurable goals. Uh, we had a post about this in our Mental Health Monday, uh, in our Mental Health Monday series, uh, not too long ago about SMART goals. Uh, so putting together some SMART goals for you, achievable goals that you can 
tangibly take away, especially from Ramadan. So looking at Ramadan in that aspect as well. Number five, how, uh, wh where did I do well? Where did you do well in Ramadan and where could you do better? Again, uh, lifting up the positive things. Don't just feel like, you know, we're, if everything went bad or everything went good, you know, don't, don't just be uh, completely unmindful of how you evaluate Ramadan, but it's absolutely important that we be honest with ourselves when we're evaluating our month and acknowledge and lift up the things that we did well and take note of the things that we can improve on because improvement is lifelong, but we need to know where did we do well? We need to be able to build up on that because it, undoubtedly there are some things that you did well, but being mindful of it, doing, doing well, sometimes it gets limited just to the ritual aspect, but sometimes it's also in that mindset that, hey, you know what? I wasn't able to pray as much. I wasn't able to do this as much, but I'm, I really felt like I was connected to Allah. I really felt that I was connected and I had this mindful. I felt you know, that I need to do better, that just having that, that mindset may be that first uh, sign of that wellness and being able to build up on that. And then lastly here, how do you feel about yourself? What positive and negative feelings come to mind? Again, Ramadan is a month of mercy and forgiveness. And as much as we might try to be perfect as humans, we're inevitably going to fall short uh, in certain places. And just because you didn't meet your goals or do everything perfectly doesn't mean that you are any less or you're a bad Muslim. Give yourself fair, compassion-centered evaluation because Allah loves those who try. Allah loves who, those who return to Allah and those who struggle with sincerity, but their intentions are pure. So be able to give yourself that evaluation that are, are you, see, is Ramadan a time where you, and after Ramadan, a time where you are uh, looking at yourself in a negative light? Are you self-deprecating yourself? Are you saying that, you know, a lot of negative things associated with it? Because there's a difference between saying that, you know, I can be better. I can do, I can do better on this. I know myself, I can be better at these things versus like, I'm a failed human being. I'm a terrible Muslim. I'm this. So removing that negativity and replacing it with, uh, replacing it with opportunity. So removing the negativity, replacing it with opportunity and positivity in a sense that, look, I might've fallen short here, but the door is still open for me to be able to do this here. Five, the five daily prayers are required uh, before Ramadan and even so after Ramadan. Uh, fasting is something that happens outside of Ramadan. It happens throughout. The other pillars of Islam happen outside of Ramadan and they can still happen uh, out, out, out as well. So, so how can you, you're, you're, you're not somebody completely different in Ramadan that you were after Ramadan or before, but you're able to build up on that which you may have done as well as build on that which you didn't do. And so let's take a look at seeing what positive feelings we can inject here, what uh, positive thoughts we can inject for the purpose of building up on this. So if we just break ourselves down and just destroy ourselves after going through such a rough patch, you know, what, what, will, it, what will it do for us in the days to come, in the months to come? So we want to set ourselves up for success. And when we just knock down what little we might have built up, even if mentally or spiritually, physically, it's not going to do us any good in the long run. So taking Ramadan for us in this aspect, not as the end all be all. Ramadan is the uh, is the means, not the end. It's the means for us to build a strong spiritual house. And maybe this Ramadan, we were just building the foundation. We were just building the intention. And inshallah, in the months to come, in the days to come, we can continue to build upon that. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ taught us that any supplication that we lift up in every day and night of Ramadan, every servant amongst humanity has a supplication and prayer that will be answered. So there's something that we may have been praying for. There's something that we may have called to Allah that uh, we may not have seen come to fruition, but the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that there's something that will be accepted, something that will be answered. And when it's something broad in a sense of guidance, or if it's mercy or compassion, we may see that from unexpected sources. So inshallah, as we cl close today, I just want to lift that up that uh, however your Ramadan went, whether it was the best Ramadan ever, especially after coming after a pandemic and being able to uh, come to see people in person, or whether it was another isolated, difficult, struggling Ramadan, wherever it was, you as a person are not just defined by that Ramadan. That, that Ramadan is not the end of, of, of your story. That Ramadan is an opportunity. And maybe we were able to make the most of it. Maybe some of us were not. But now that we're looking back on Ramadan, how can we make the most of where we were? So using that Ramadan, going beyond that Ramadan, but being, being, going, being able to go above and beyond that Ramadan, regardless if we finished strong or if we struggled until the end. And so we want to use this time to be able to see that Allah has given us that ability, given us the pleasure, given us the uh, strength and the blessing to be able to even see the week after Ramadan. 
our change can begin today. It can begin right now. So whether we miss those prayers, whether we miss those fasts, whether we miss whatever it was that the opportunity to change how we talk to each other, to remove the curse words, to not backbite, to do any of that stuff, to even just be mindful. If we didn't do that uh, up until now, now is the time to even start on the blessed day of Juma to be able right after this time to go ahead and start that. Uh, it's never too late. And inshallah, Allah loves those who change their lives, who transform their lives, especially in Ramadan, but if they weren't, but to be able to use that as a platform. So the blessings on Ramadan can carry over the prayers on Ramadan can be answered much, much later than uh, it has to happen in Ramadan. It can be afterwards as well. So inshallah, we ask Allah to guide us to allow whatever we had put together in Ramadan, however modest, however grand, however small, um, to in our eyes that Allah makes it a source of blessing for us to see for many, many months to come for the rest of our lives. We ask Allah to uh, give us this and so much more, but to give us at the least another opportunity to give us more chances to be able to turn back to Allah. And uh, in closing, inshallah, we uh, ask that Allah makes our fasting that we lifted up uh, if we were able to fast. If we weren't able to fast, that Allah lifts any of the other sacrifices that we we're able to lift up as expiation or anything else as substitute. Similarly, our prayers, our deeds, and our whole Ramadan journey, the ups and downs of it as a whole, regardless of where we are, where we were, or who we were, that it was lifted up as a means of purification, reflection, and connection, correction, and redemption, and to remind us that all of this was for Allah. And all of this continues to be for Allah, as Allah teaches us in the Quran, saying that, say, indeed, my prayer, my rites of sacrifice, my living, and my dying are for Allah, Lord of all the world. And that we ask Allah to show us, uh, to allow us, not just to uh, witness another Ramadan, but to be able to make the most in between this time from one Ramadan to the next and to be able to benefit from this, this in-between space, inshallah. And that we are not only to be, just be those who witness this time, but to be able to return to Allah during this time, to benefit during this time and to experience it fully for the sake of becoming God conscious. Allahumma inna ka'afoon kareemun tuhibbul afafu fafu anni. That, oh Allah, you are the best forgiver. You love forgiveness, and so forgive me. We say this du'a in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and even before, and we say it again here today because the forgiveness is always needed. And as our father Ibrahim salam said when concluding and raising his, his Kaaba, his dedication to Allah uh, with his son, we too close this supplication, we close this, this khutbah with a dedication of our own and with some of the du'as that Ibrahim salam had lifted up for us, that Rabbana taqabbal minna, our Lord, accept this from us. Accept this service from us, for Thou art all hearing, all knowing. Rabbana wa ja'alna muslimaini laka wa min dhurriyatina ummatan muslimata laka wa arina manasikana wa tuba alayna inna ka anta tawwab rahim O Lord, O our Lord, make us Muslims to you, make us those who submit to you and make us from our descendants, a nation that submits to you, a Muslim nation that submits to you and show us our rights of worship and accept our return to you, accept our repentance to you. Indeed, you are the one who accepts, who loves repentance, who loves returning the most merciful. My Lord, Make me an establisher of prayer and for many of my descendants and my Lord, accept our Lord, accept the supplication. And Rabbana Firli, Oli Walidaya, Walil Mu'minina, Yoma Yukumul Hisab. Our Lord, forgive me, forgive us, forgive our parents and the day and the believers until the day of account is established. Zakla Khair, Slamu Alaikum Khabarakatu, may Allah bless you, may Allah keep you, may Allah walk with you. And shall know that the journey does not end with Ramadan. And shall the journey is just beginning for for all of us in in new ways. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.